happening right now. Street Hong knowledge Kong, Canada, being learned. And the university announcing new safety measures it's been putting in place in a year when crime on and near campus has been on the rise. Our Jeff Cole is live at Temple to tell us all about it. Jeff. Yeah, Don, I think it's fair to say that Temple is working on a number of fronts to secure its campus, certainly with more cops, with more equipment for those cops as well. But it's also involved in aggressive messaging with a message that it is, in fact, they say, safe here. It's a Friday on the Temple campus and university police officers Demetrius McCain and Karen Brinkley have parked their cruiser and are walking the campus called Park and Walk. It's one way Temple is trying to make the community feel safe. It gives a, a form of um, comfort and safety to know that officers are around and knowing that you can actually see them. Seeing cops on campus is believing you're safe, argues Temple's VP for security, who's working to change the perception that this North Philly public institution of 34,000 students is unsafe for students and staff. We want officers to be on the ground level that they can engage with people quickly to decrease the opportunity for violence and gun violence. Temple has seen trouble. November of 2021, student Sam Collington is unloading his car. After Another wokester. This guy, hold on. This guy was a huge Democrat. Like he was like future Democrats of America. He was big in the fucking like junior Democrat party, all that shit. He was all of that stuff, man. He was um, he was very similar to the ones we're seeing out here. Salute to IA. He says, I no longer believe the slave narrative. Sons risk their lives attempting to reach glider shores now and probably did it this well. well, listen, man, I will say this. I, I don't know if that's true, but I will say this. If you were a slave in Africa, fwing, so you got that, if you know what I mean, that's gone. And then if your master dies, you're buried in a um alive in a grave, in a mass grave with him. So I think that, you know, or or you or you die trying to build the Great Wall of China. Yeah. So I, I think that, you know, if you had to choose between slavery there or slavery here, I think most people would choose slavery here. I'll give you that. I don't know about your theory completely, but I'll give you that. Um, salute to Nate Ways when he says, Sue the Juice Fund. Let's get a win for the Chief and Fisherman ch Challenge now. Yeah, man. Salute, man. Support the support the channel, man. Support the hit the hit the take the 10, 15, 20 dollar cat um um challenge, man. Um we got we got we got a we got a, a glider, we got a um patel up here. What's up, stop resisting, man? What's going on, man? Yo, what up? Hey, I was just thinking, like, um, the previous thing that you did, like, all these, uh, uh, you know, do-gooders, they just want to just help these poor POCs, and they always get up, end up getting killed. But, I mean, can we at least get one news about some well-to-do POC helping a glider kid, like a poor <laughs> glider kid? We never get that. It's always one way. I mean, there's got to yeah. be, like, some really nice, well-to-do POC that they can go and, like, help out some glider kids that are in the orphan or something. Mentor them. But you'll never see that. Well, I, I, I'll say this, though. Like, the perception from black people is that you guys have privilege. Um, and you don't need it. So there's that. And then, look, I will say this. Most wealthy black men in this country are married to white women. So we help you in that way. You know what I'm saying? We help white women in that way. For the white race. Because, um, like, I mean, a lot of our celebrities, a lot of our well, wealthy guys. You know what? That kind of reminds me. I was thinking about, so, um, you know how they say, like, 75% of uh, uh, son kids are born out of wedlock. Um you know, single parent household. And then now also it used to be really low for gliders and that's actually increasing too now. I don't know how much it was back then, but I think it's 25% now. 
I mean, doesn't that correlate to doesn't that correlate to uh, more interracial marriages? I would like to see that it's ninety two percent when 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 and with with um black male and white woman it's ninety two percent out of wedlock. Okay, so that's that's what's one of the major causes is the the cause is the same. Sun men in both cases, interracial and you know, same race. Which leads me to believe that that's not in our gene. Like our the way we're wired is to have the baby and we're not we're hands off. Maybe that's an evolutionary um thing where we're not hands on with the kids like that. We're not even wired like that. Because sometimes you just got to, like, accept things. You know what I'm saying? You can't fix. Well, America's always trying to fix stuff. We need to get. What if we just not wired like that? What if some of us are going to be in home, but the majority of us are not going to be, like, hands-on in our kids' lives? Um, What if that's just the way it is? And you can't fix it. You just accept it. And it may be a reason. Maybe if we're the most violent or the most prone to violence or the most um, I mean, if you just look at the stats, man, I mean, the most, maybe us being away from the kid is an evolutionary, um, you know, because evolution always, right, Fisher, am I right, Fisher? Evolution is always to, like, extend life, right, or make life, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, it's ran, it's varied, for sure, like, the ways in which survival occurs. yeah. So we, but the we, thing about it is, like, in modern, you know, like, first world economies, you have to have the man invest in the children or the whole thing goes to shit. Yeah, but DNA would usurp. That's society. That's, you're talking about software. You're talking about people in a society that they didn't build. Yeah, I get that. But I'm saying, like, if you're self-aware of the fact of, like, your own shortcomings, you can kind of mitigate that. Like, you if you appreciate, if, if you're a... Hmm? You think you can overcome DNA? More so than we're currently experiencing right now, yeah. Mm. I don't think you can overcome DNA. And I think this show, if you that thumbnail, <laughs> it's, it's proof of that, man. I don't think I don't think you can overcome DNA, man. On a on a on a um as a collective. I think a person here, a person there, a person there could overcome DNA. But as a collective, you're gonna see DNA express itself. Yeah, I think that's true. I just think we're like abysmally failing. <laughs> like, like I, I think there is room for improvement, but is it going to be amazing and like, you know, perfect? No, it'll never be that. Each with people quickly to decrease the opportunity for violence and gun violence. Temple has seen trouble. November of 2021, student Sam Collington is unloading his car after Thanksgiving when he shot and killed. February of this year, Temple officer Christopher Fitzgerald is slain in a struggle with a suspect. The uproar in part forces Temple's president to resign. Security Chief Griffin says Temple has added more cops, better pay, more cameras and cruisers and says the university is not alone. It's a citywide issue. It's a nationwide issue that we're all trying to leverage all of our resources for. You feel safe on campus? Uh, I would say it's not really, to be honest. <laughs> she didn't know if she wanted to be politically correct or not. Like, is this going to cost me a job if I answer this now? Uh, you feel safe on campus? Uh, I would say it's not really, to be honest. Like, I get, um, I'm only a freshman, but, like, I got so many messages already about shootings and stuff. On a warm Friday in the heart of campus, safety seems of no concern and opinions are mixed. It's been a pretty good police presence. I see them all around. Uh, when I'm going to Maxie's late night for a slice, you know, they're always, they always got my back. So, overall, I think they're doing a pretty good job. Numbers often tell the story. Last school year, Temple spent nearly $30 million on security. This year, it expects to spend nearly $31 million. So this kid right here, he's coming into a different world. He's coming into a world where they just spent 
what, $61 million on fucking security. So, he, of course, he has a different view. And, of course, the other girls, you know, yeah, well, last year, though, it was, uh, all them kids was like, hell no, I don't feel safe up here. It's been a Yo, pretty that girl, presence. I see them all around. That girl walking behind this, behind that girl with a hijab on and smoking a cigarette. That's wild. I've never seen that before. That's crazy. That's that's that's, that's a new American Barbie doll right there. <sighs> hey man, she's Americanized. Very spent nearly thirty-one million live here, or at least over thirty-one million live here in the Temple campus. Jeff Cole, Fox Twenty-Nine News. Folks. All right, Jeff. Thank you.